Hi guys, I'm Connie Romans with Oklahoma Career Tech. This is Career Tech Conversations, and today we're talking to Mark Birch. Mark is State Program Manager for Career Tech's Business, Marketing, and Information Technology Education Division, or BMITE. Mark, thanks for being here this morning. Glad to be here, Connie. Thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about your division, other than that it has a lot of words in the name, of course, but what courses do you offer and where are they offered? We are BMITE, or Business, Marketing, Information Technology Education. Uh, we have four cluster areas, business, management, administration, finance, marketing, and information technology. We cover 51 state program areas, 71 local program areas. We have a total of 430 programs across the state. 283 of those are in K-12 or comprehensive schools. And then we have 147 in our technology centers. Of those, 388 of them are BITE, or Business and Information Technology, and then 42 of those are marketing programs. In terms of courses, we actually have over 125 across middle level, secondary, and post-secondary. 55 of them now are actually approved for Oklahoma Promise for computer technology credit, uh, which is important for our high school students needing those technology credits. Uh, Fundamentals of Technology is our foundational course, which is a prereq for all of our other higher level courses. And from there, it goes to computerized accounting, desktop publishing, cybersecurity, digital marketing, gaming development, and everything in between. Wow. And on top of all of those courses, all of those programs, you also offer students the chance to participate in not one, but two career tech student organizations. Tell me about that. That's correct. We have uh, two in our division. We've got DECA for our marketing programs. Uh, DECA teaches students to learn, lead, compete, and discover. Uh, Most of our marketing programs also have what we call SBEs, student-based enterprise, and it teaches those students to run a school-based store, and they learn the back-end operations. They learn uh, purchasing customer service, sales, all of that. So it teaches them a lot how to run their own business, uh, so to speak. We also have BPA, another acronym, Business Professionals of America. Both of those have a lot of competitions. You know, BPA probably has over 120 competitions for students to compete in. But again, it's also teaching them about citizenship, leadership skills, um, and a lot of things like that as well. Now, back in the day, DECA used to be an acronym that actually stood for something. What does it stand for today? Uh, it actually doesn't really stand for anything other than DECA. Uh, it used to be Distribu- Distributive Education Clubs of America. Nowadays, it's just DECA. All right. And you mentioned that you do have two, BPA and DECA, but why is there so much emphasis being placed on student organizations? What do students get out of their participation in this? Well, the best part about career tech programs and the CTSOs that are within those programs is that they're intracurricular or co-curricular. And the design behind that is all of the projects or things that they're doing in the classroom are hands-on. It's real-world experience. It's simulating work life. And so it better prepares those students as they're going out into the workforce or they're preparing for their next experience, whether that is career, whether that's college. They're learning those skills to get them ready for their next phase in life. They're also learning soft skills. So what are some examples of of those? Absolutely. You know, um, through my tenure there in the BMITE division, you know, I started out as a state advisor for BPA and DECA. And one of the primary things that I learned from leading those students is when they first get into those student organizations, their biggest fear is standing in front of people, those presentation skills. And that's the number one thing that I learned from them is like, you know, Mr. Birch, I never wanted to get up in front of people and give a presentation or talk, but by the time they leave, they're so much more comfortable in getting up in front of people, giving a presentation, and so it that's the biggest skill that they learn. But they also learn time management. They learn to be more responsible. They learn to be problem solvers. Um, they learn critical thinking. And so a lot of things that are going to help them along the way in life, they're learning because they're part of a team. Um, They're learning to become better leaders. And so there's just a lot of valuable skills that they're learning through the student organizations. In some of our programs, like, say, welding, we're we're obviously teaching them a trade so they can go out and get a job. So in your programs, are we teaching them how to be a a 
an employee, how to be a student, how, what are we preparing them for? Whatever their heart desires. You know, uh, we have, like, like I said, we have over 71 local programs. And so anything from graphic design specialist, cybersecurity, um, accountant, you name it. And so they can go straight from one of our programs into career. They can go into college. Um, a lot of our high school programs, they may start one of, the pro- one of those programs and then go finish it up at one of their local technology centers. And so the beauty about any of our career tech programs is whatever that student wants to do, they can finish it up and be ready for what life's throwing at them. Awesome. Were you in a CTSO back in the day? You know, back in the day, a long day ago, uh, I spent one year in FFA. And that was actually before I even knew what a CTSO was. You know, there was a poster that said, free food, come and find out about FFA. And, uh, you know, anytime you tell a freshman in high school that there's free food, I'm going to be there. And so I did spend one year in FFA, um, learned a little bit about judging cattle, which today I know nothing about because I forgot all about it. Uh, But I did spend one year in that. Uh, I was more of a big athlete guy, so I couldn't really do both at the time. But uh, nowadays, you know, I wish I would have spent more time in it. So you were in career tech through a CTSO, and then you were in career tech as a state advisor, and now you are in career tech as a state program manager. So you left and then you came back, which kind of means to me this is a pretty cool place to work. Why did you decide this was the place to be? Well, you know, I've always been passionate about students. You know, after I graduated college, I spent 15 years in business and industry, but my passion wasn't fulfilled. You know, I went back, got my all ed, taught in the classroom for a few years, and then um, came to career tech here. And then I saw a posting and it said, BPA state advisor slash program specialist. Now, let me reverse that program specialist slash BPA state advisor. I'm like, well, how hard can the BPA state advisor be? Well, what I quickly found out is the BPA state advisor was most of my job at the time. But what I quickly learned is a passion that was in me for these students and what they were learning through the student organization and how successful they became um, as they went through that student organization and through the programs and to this day, some of those students that I serve still keep up with me, whether it's on social media or through email. And they're just always so thankful, you know, for the time and effort that we put into them. And it's great to see their success these days. In particular, I know you've had a couple of students that have been wildly successful as a result, at least in part, of your program. And yes, I realize that we're kind of getting things out of order, but tell me about at least one of those. Absolutely. You know, back in, uh, I believe it was 2019, 2020, I was actually serving as a state advisor for both DECA and BPA. And I had a young lady named Kyla Ellis. I believe her last name is now Woodbridge. She's been married. Um, She was from Edmond Memorial, uh, serving as a state officer for DECA. Um, She went on to actually be our first DECA glass winner, um, finished first place in her competition at international um, competition. Um, She's actually also now our current co-chair of our Oklahoma DECA Alumni and Advocacy Committee um, here at Career Tech for that. She'll graduate uh, OSU uh, May this year, 2023, and she's actually already started her own business called Events Unboxed. So basically, you're having an event, a birthday party, something like that. she sends it to you in a box. You take everything out, boom, you have your party. And so she's very entrepreneurial. And uh, so she's going to have a bright future ahead of her. Um, just a very positive um, young woman. And I know she's got a bright future ahead of her. As you probably know, I write feature stories called Career Tech Champions. And it yeah. sounds like I need to be reaching out to her and, and profiling her as someone who's gone through one of our programs and obviously achieved major success. Oh, that'd be fantastic. She would love to do that. What careers in BMIT do you think might surprise people in terms of salary, for instance, or job opportunities or both? Yeah, at least within our division, um, a lot of them come out of our IT sector or IT cluster. Um, 
you know, one of them I was researching probably a couple of weeks ago was in our web game development or software developer, you know, and to think that a student could go through that program and come out starting making $60,000, you know, just through that program. And then with experience, getting all the way up to $100,000 or more just through a career tech program is pretty good because I went to a four-year college, come out making $40,000. That's pretty good money. Now, how long is that program? Um, that one is a 1,050 hour. So you're looking at a two-year program. So two years and you walk out and you're making... 60 grand. I did it all wrong back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have been talking a lot lately, even on Career Tech Conversations, about the film industry. And lots of our divisions are involved in different ways, uh, maybe building sets or maybe teaching about cameras or whatever. Um, is your division involved at all in that movement in Oklahoma? Well, we've certainly been in on a few of those conversations, and there's no doubt that we have several pathways that are going to help feed that industry as it continues to grow. Um, we have audio video technician, we have graphic design specialist, um, video production, assistants, you name it. And I know there's a lot of curriculum being built around that industry. And so as we move forward, I know we're going to be a big player in that. And so I'm looking forward to see how, seeing how that grows and where we can go to help it. It's exciting times to be in Oklahoma for sure. That's it. It absolutely is. Um, you know, there's been a lot of films coming to Oklahoma, and so I know that it's only going to continue to grow, and I look forward to seeing how we can help support that. Now, early on, we talked about all the acronyms, and I'm kind of fixated on how many hundreds of acronyms Career Tech has, but um, yours, of course, is BMITE, but it didn't always, the letters weren't always in that order, and people still smile when they think about its original acronym. So you're talking about the times when I used to come by your office and say, bite me, Connie? Yeah, that, that, would, be, that would be the one. So maybe we should just let that one go. Probably so. <laughs> now, just so people understand, that's because bite, which was business and IT education, and then ME for marketing education is where bite me came from. But with the times, we change, and that's where now it's be might to make it more appropriate, and maybe people aren't as offended. So I'm sure that Bite Me was better for your uh, marketing purposes in terms of, you know, ninth grade interest. But yeah. <laughs> what about your your interest level now, regardless of Bite Me or, or Be Might? Are your classes all full? Do you have waiting lists? How does that? Um, many of our technology center programs do have a waiting list. Um, matter of fact, especially in our IT programs and many of those across the state, um, the enrollment is very, very good. Um, we are seeing an uptick in our marketing programs. You know, those were down for a little bit, um, especially in our comprehensive schools. We've actually added a couple marketing programs over the last couple of years. So it's nice to see that those are coming back a little bit because um, I think those are important skills that our students are learning even within those programs and seeing that administration is finding value in those and bringing them back as well. Absolutely. Something I just thought of and, and didn't let you know that I might mention, but did the the initial months or years of COVID have any impact on your enrollment, your students, your learning process? Well, the learning process for sure, because that uh, kind of set everyone back a little bit because it was weren't quite sure how to do everything in a virtual environment. But I also think it helped move us forward because we quickly learned that we can do some things virtually and we figured some things out through that process in terms of other tools and resources that we can use to give information to students in a different way. Um, now, can you do hands-on learning a lot of times through a virtual environment? Not all things. Now, some things you can. Cybersecurity, a lot of those jobs, a lot of them are remote, right? So you're going to do a lot of that work remotely anyway. Um, some of the jobs you talked about earlier, welding and things like that. Yeah, we can't do that through a computer. Um, but some of the things that we learned through COVID are going to help move us forward and make us better overall in terms of how we serve students and, and how we can do things maybe even a little bit more efficiently as we go through time here and move forward. 
So you mentioned earlier that you are passionate about Be My, Bite Me, Career Tech, all of the things that we've talked about here today. What did we not let you brag about or share with us this morning that you really would like people to know? Well, first and foremost, Connie, I want to make sure that all of our teachers understand how much we appreciate and value them because they're on the front lines with our students each and every day. And they certainly inspire us and encourage us to keep moving forward and finding innovative ways to make their lives easier and finding opportunities for students um, every day. Um, A couple of ways that we do that is we try to find more innovative ways to make things more digital um, and, and decrease the time that they're spending, whether it's reporting, five-year evaluations, um, or even for students, how do we make them be better prepared for their competitions, whether it's at state, nationals, et cetera? Because um, we know how much other responsibilities that they have at their local school districts. It's not always just CTE. It's yearbook sponsor, it's senior class sponsor, it's all of these other things that they have to do day in and day out. And so we understand that, we get it. And so our goal is to be a valuable resource to them and making sure they understand that we appreciate them and that we value them each and every day. Sounds like your teachers are in very good hands. We certainly hope so. Thank you for joining me this morning. I appreciate it. I learned a lot. For more information about DECA, BPA, BMITE, or other career tech programs, follow us on social media. You can keep up with Career Tech Conversations on Facebook and Twitter at Career Tech Convo. And you can find our audio podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get podcasts. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you'll join us again for Career Tech Conversations. I'm Connie Romans.